welcome biologists to this session where we're going to be taking a look at how water potential in the blood is maintained and controlled by using ADH and also the collecting ducts found in the kidneys. Now the control of water potential in the blood is also known as osmoregulation. Osmoregulation is an example of negative feedback whereby there is a change within the body, either it increases or decreases, and there's a change brought about which brings it back to the normal range. Negative feedback uses this um, feedback loop where I have a stimulus, which in this case is more or too much water or too less water. It's detected by a receptor, which is the Osmo receptor in this case. <clears throat> this then sends a message, <clears throat> a chemical message in this case of ADH, or it doesn't send ADH depending upon what needs to be done. And the effector is the kidneys, specifically the cells that line the wall of the collecting duct. And this will trigger a response within the body to either reabsorb more or less water depending upon what the outcome needs to be. So osmoregulation, as mentioned just then, uh, we have our osmoreceptors, which are found within the hypothalamus in the brain. Now these osmoreceptors, and they would detect a low concentration within water within the blood. And what happens is it would send a signal down special neurosecretory cells uh, that link up the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary gland. These neurosecretory cells are like specialized adapted nerve cells, which also allow the transmission of hormones through them. So ADH is kind of passed along these neurosecretory cells to the posterior pituitary gland where the ADH can be stored until it is needed to be released. Now, if I don't have a lot of water within my blood, ADH will be released from my posterior pituitary gland and it needs to get to the effector, which in this case are the cells in the collecting duct in the kidneys. And it gets there by being transported in the blood. So here we have the collecting duct, just to remind yourself, this is a picture of a nephron and that's the area of the kidney that is gonna be the target for ADH. So this is what's going on when ADH arrives near the collecting duct. If you want to pause it and try and figure out what's going on, it's probably a good idea. But the first thing that happens here is that blood containing ADH will arrive um, in the cells that surround my collecting duct. Um, the receptors on these walls that line my collecting duct here, these receptors will be complementary and specific in shape to the ADH, the hormone that's been transported in the blood. So on the left hand side here is the blood supply that lines the nephrons and on the right hand side here this is the lumen of the collecting duct. This is where the urine is being collected. So the first thing that happens is my ADH is attaching to these complementary and specific in shape receptors on the on the walls of the collecting duct, the cells that line those walls. The next thing that's happening is that this ADH is gonna trigger a response inside the cell, whereby vesicles that you can see inside here, these vesicles that contain these white aquaporins here, these vesicles containing the white aquaporins are gonna then be fusing with the cell surface membrane. Now, the way in which that would happen is uh, through the cytoskeleton, which will have contractile filaments which move vesicles around the cell. In this case, the vesicle is being moved to the cell surface membrane and therefore aquaporins are going to be inserted into the cell wall here. Now, what this means is that more water can then be reabsorbed back into the bloodstream and be taken to wherever it's needed. Now, these aquaporins have what's known as a half-life whereby over a set amount of time, the number of aquaporins here would decrease by half. So they're not permanent, these. They would need to be reinserted back into the plasma or cell surface membrane if more ADH was to be released by the body. So aquaporins, these are basic intrinsic uh, protein pores. And yes, water can diffuse straight through the phospholipid bilayer, but by using aquaporins, it does increase the permeability of the membrane, allowing more water to pass through it, which is what we need to happen here in order for more water to be reabsorbed back into the bloodstream. Now, if I have low ADH levels, uh, this means that I'm going to have more dilute urine. It means that less water is going to be reabsorbed back into the bloodstream and more is going to be passed out in your urine. So there we have it. That's what happens when we're trying to regulate our water potential within our blood. You do need to be aware of any suggested questions that might come up as to, um, for example, drugs or alcohol that might impact upon the role of ADH. So do be prepared for those. Guys, good luck with your exams. Remember to use as much scientific terminology as possible in your answers.